Hi there, you're listening to Commissioning Conversations, the podcast brought to you by Broadcast Intelligence. So hi there, welcome to another episode of Commissioning Conversations. I'm here this week with the wonderful Victoria Noble. So kick us off, Victoria. What's going on? Thanks, Hannah. So um, I'm Victoria Noble. I'm a VP of Original Content for Discovery UK. So I lead a creative team based in uh, London and we oversee the development and production of our male skewing original content. So that's for our D2C platform, Dplay, free to air channels, Quest and Dmax and in pay Discovery channels. So we're producing content for our local market in the UK, but also content for our international markets that, that across a wide range of genres um, that travel globally. So that's sort of, uh, that, that, that's, that's, that's what I do and the, and the team do. In terms of Quest and Discovery, is it helpful if I sort of share a little bit about where those channels are? And Yeah, well, I was thinking we're at kind of a different point right now because production is starting to resume and things feel like they're picking up a little bit. So, yeah, if you kind of want to unpack where Quest and Discovery are on that kind of trajectory and and, um, what you're currently currently working on generally we're looking for content that works across multiple platforms so channel agnostic content that can sit on our direct to consumer products as well as our portfolio of linear channels and i think at the heart of all of our content that we commission is the sort of male dna but it has to appeal to a broad audience a co-viewing audience and that's how we deliver scale and with quest and discovery which are our major uh, linear brands in, in male skewing quest recently became the top performing non-psb network for men which we're absolutely thrilled about and yeah, its share of male viewers has gone up 25 percent with a share of 16 to 34 year olds up 71 percent this year so it's extraordinary you know there's a lot of hard work has obviously gone into this but it's great to see it paying off and we've also seen some real great results with discovery channel obviously continues to be the number one factual pay channel for adults but it has grown adult share by 14 percent so you know we've got some big hitting shows and we've got international talent we're creating shows that travel so we've got shows like um we've had richard hammond's big richard gave us license to explore engineering in a more entertaining way um and that was a series that received a lot of press attention so noisy factual shows we're definitely about that at the moment and i think um i think discovery shows are experiential um they're authentic they're immersive they have appeal to a broad audience you know i'm thinking families lads and dads watching together co-viewing audience and i think shows that feel sort of epic that 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 have a quality about them that feel international just going back to the lads yeah, and go dads for it. thing how do you get those two groups together are there any specific like genres or subjects or entry points that yeah. kind of really resonate with the lad and dad audience yeah so i think it's about creating ent- entertaining content that families can watch together that there's plenty of takeout but there's the entertainment factor so ed stafford first man out you know we've made a lot of survival shows but actually ed stafford first man out is a is our first international competition survival format so it's really good fun you know there's a great reason to watch to the end you've got two competing who's going to win there's a there's a very simple question at the heart of that idea and that is simply who's the best survival expert in the world and and i think ed is as a survival expert he is you know authentic and credible and he's not afraid to show his emotions and his vulnerability and that's one of the reasons i think he's got such wide appeal actually that he resonates with the modern audience we've worked with ed for a number of years and created a number of shows with him in fact walking the amazon was his first piece of television and of course as well we also made man woman child wild which was really a a family survival show so ed Uh, his wife Laura who's expecting twins any minute and their young son Ran went and spent some time on some on an Indonesian island and sort of lived wild I think quite a lot of us probably feel like doing that at at the moment so I think it's you know it's actually we're reflecting 
I think we're reflecting our audience. We're mirroring in some ways, you know, how they might be feeling. And, you know, we're putting talent on the screen that are not afraid to show vulnerability, but who are also passionate and not afraid to, 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 to show their passion, their authentic. So I think we're creating hugely relatable shows, actually. And I think that gives broad appeal. And what have you been working on then during during lockdown? Have you got any irons in the fire you can oh yes can reveal? We did commission content under mm-hmm. lockdown, and we commissioned content to support our producers and our talent. You know, everyone was stuck at home, and we produced. I don't think it's been announced yet, but uh, it was a, a it was a motoring archive show, which is in production at the moment. And you know, it's just gave an opportunity for our talent to come together. Uh, albeit virtually, you know, and talk about the cars they love and have some fun. And I felt like it gave a real sort of um, pulling together a sense of community. And obviously, during this difficult time for our producers and the freelance community, you know, it was a show that could be cut remotely, that interviews could be filmed over Zoom and Skype, and then sort of picked up when, uh, when, um, when a camera person could get out there and film so we we we've got that in production at the moment um, we also commissioned salvage hunters design classics under lockdown and and this is a um a deeply personal look actually at designs and objects that have captured the imagination and heart of drew pritchard who is our antiques and salvage expert so Drew from Salvage Hunters and also Salvage Hunters Classic Cars and also appears in Salvage Hunters The Restorers. The, the other area which we were working in during um, lockdown is that we produce a, a number of shows in Australia. We work very okay. successfully with the Australian producers and we've got a couple of really big shows. So we've got Aussie Gold Hunters with electric pictures and Outback Opal Hunters and Outback Truckers with Prospero and because these shows were shooting in very remote areas and actually Western Australia had some of the sort of lowest numbers of incidents we were able to with strict protocols of course uh, contain our crews and our talent actually in these very remote areas and continue filming and so it's been fantastic actually so our pipeline of shows from Australia hasn't been impacted in terms of schedule. Of course, filming schedules in the UK um, have been impacted and we are getting back out there now um, with our talent and our producers and partners uh, to create. But, but we've, we, we've got some, ex- ex- some exciting announcements coming up. We've greenlit almost 100 hours of new content in the last month. Amazing. Um, with some big name talent. And that's all coming soon. I can't, okay. um, I can't quite reveal all of that yet. There is a lot going on. And I think, you know, our viewers come to Quest to escape the madness of the world. You know, they want to be entertained. They want to be taken into different environments and different spaces. And I think Quest has this rather wonderful celebratory warm bath feel. And, and I think some of the areas and key touch points that seem particularly pertinent now, sort of escapist TV, hobbies, heritage, home, celebrating Britain. I mean, most of us are spending our holidays in the British countryside. Nostalgia, craft and artisanal process, um, celebrating everyday heroes. I don't know, qualities like authenticity, the good life, wild lives. You know, many of our shows are actually delivering in those spaces. And so we have seen, you know, extraordinary ratings throughout this time. And I feel that our shows are really sort of on point to certainly how the nation is feeling at the moment. Um, and that's been, you know, beneficial. And so we've got, we, you know, we've got a lot of shows that we're in production with. Um, we, we've produced, uh, you know, sort of in scale in terms of our Salvage Hunter franchise so we have got um we're not sort of um we haven't got holes in the schedule cool. at the moment that's good to yeah. know salvage hunter is such a kind of like mega yeah. beast no. spin-offs and drew pitchard yeah. so i was thinking like how, how do you think that, that one show kind of resonates so well with your audience mm. and, and why it can kind of live yeah. on in this cool franchise way yeah i mean look the success has been phenomenal salvage hunters is co-viewing it's got that warm, it's a celebratory show, and it's got an authentic expert, 
and a family business at its heart. I think Drew and his mate T, um, uh, and they are genuine friends. They've been friends since they, they went to school together, um, are out there finding treasure and saving and restoring items. And I think we all love the idea of finding treasure. There's lots of takeout in that show. Drew takes the viewer on a journey across the UK and sometimes Europe. It's very sort of a, a celebratory meeting characters from all walks of life and there's history too and you know we spun off with the restorers which you know in the original salvage hunters the the restoration piece was a very small part of the show but we recognized there was an opportunity there for fa fantastic transformation but also really to showcase these wonderful artisan skills that you don't often get to see and to really celebrate these skills actually and so that's where the sort of uh, restorers as a spin-off came you know we see them bringing these sort of items that were once treasured back to life and I think the transformations are incredible the standard of work is extraordinary and i think it transports our viewers into these sort of wonderful workshops they can escape into these places where magic happens and actually we thought thought really long and hard about how we film the series and i think it feels sort of quite glossy and quite rich and we sort of revel in the in in the skills of our artisans and i guess the sort of third string to Drew's bow in the sort of Salvage Hunters is um, is Salvage Hunters classic cars. And look, um, motoring shows are a passion of mine. I've been making them for a long, long time. And I think um, there was an opportunity here to spin off because Drew genuinely has got a car business. You know, in, in some way, you know, he's been trading cars as long as he's been trading furniture and collectibles. And we had worked with Paul Cowland in the past, uh, they are friends. It's a small community, the car community. And I think they have such fun making Salvage Hunters classic cars um, that as a viewer, you you want to be with them on their road trip across the country um, discovering these extraordinary cars. I think it, it feels sort of a bit like a buddy movie. It, um, and I think their passion shines through. So I think, I think as a viewer, it feels very authentic and warm, and I think that's why it, why it, why it works so well. It's so celebratory. I'm looking forward then about what is next for you guys and what you're asking from producers at this time. What for both Discovery and Quest? What's kind of on the agenda in terms of what people should be pitching you right now? So we've had a lot of success on Quest, obviously with our Salvage Hunters franchise, but we've also been pushing into new precincts and territories. So. Um, this year we had Four Mucky. That has done very well and that's our farming show. And that is really a celebration again of the countryside. But we were looking at how can we create farming or countryside that's for a male skewing audience. Traditionally, uh, farming and countryside shows are very, very female. So actually putting the emphasis on the mechanical on the engineering, on build, on tech stories, on father and son relationships, made it feel a bit more tough jobs and human endeavour. And of course, has been, you know, very on point, given uh, the situation we found ourselves in, our everyday heroes, celebrating, celebrating them. And I think it captures the reality of modern day farmers and rural Britain and their resilience and commitment actually to keep farms thriving and and that's done very well um, for us so i think we want to push into new precincts and new areas uh, on quest um i think on discovery channel you know we're interested in key genres like survival and turbo um, but i think with our direct to consumer platforms i think it opens up another opportunity actually and specials with big international talent so we've previously made for discovery channel idris elba fighter now that for me is a really sort of channel agnostic content you know that can play on a dtc platform it can play on discovery channel high stakes authenticity the real idris that was an extraordinary production so so i think shows like that that feel feel noisy and special. I'm keen to raise the entertainment levels in our factual. What's the next gang show? So we've had Grand Tour, League of Their Own, Gordon, Gino and Fred, which I love. You know, what's next? I'd really like to crack a gang show 
for us because I think they've got really broad appeal, actually. And I think they sit on uh, D2C platforms uh, and linear platforms very well. I think as well, the opportunity, you know, in the past, we've looked a lot at returning series. We've looked at formats. We've looked at big runs of shows. And actually, we can make shorter runs. We, we, can, we can look at compelling untold stories, unique access documentaries or docu-series. You know, films like Free Solo, I think, are amazing. You know, I, I also think you know, there's an opportunity now to tackle subjects that take us out of our comfort zone, whether that's, you know, films like sort of Tiger King or Black Fish, subjects that wouldn't have been a traditional fit for discovery. Um, so I think, you know, we can be very flexible there. And I think mix about mixing genres as well. You know, Ed Stafford was our first competition survival show. But, you know, what does that look like if we supersize that? with members of the public, not just survival experts, which in a way is sort of a bit more traditional in the way that Discovery has made shows. So I think shows that stand out, uh, content that is distinct and noisy, talked about shows, edgier shows, um, with a male DNA, but that will reach broader and younger audiences. And in a way, I think it's about universal appeal, relatability and truths. And I think you know, a central question can also be very helpful in terms of Ed Stafford, you know, who's the great greatest survival expert in the world? Or, you know, Touching the Void isn't really a mountaineering film. It's a film about would you cut the rope on one of your best friends? So I think it's about how, how are they relatable to our audience and those kind of universal truths? And of course, unique ec- access I, I just feel like we are at such an exciting time. So, you know, the sort of range of content that we're looking for is very, is very broad. Are you asking anything differently from producers at this time in terms of budgets or funding models? Or obviously there's a okay. lot of disruption. So that's something that's on, on your mind? Look, there is a lot of disruption, of course. And we are working with producers to try and sort of manage disruption on a on a level on a production level but also you know on the kind of funding model piece i think you know we are hugely ambitious in the ideas that we want to commission and bring to our platforms and i think you know we are open to discussions about funding models we're about bringing great content and telling compelling stories to our audiences and so you know we are open to discussions and and as far as sort of budget goes i think we've got to be realistic about budgets if This is a huge idea with big directs that's, you know, a big sort of international piece, then of course it will have a budget to match. You know, we've got to, we've got to create premium content. So I think it's very much on a case by case basis. What's the ambition of that content and where is that content going to play? And then we have a realistic budget to match those ambitions and we can work with partners on various models look, there has been a, an unnatural disruption to the production process. So, you know, shows that had to be put on pause for safety are now starting up again. So I think producers are extremely busy trying to get shows out the door. I think we are all shooting in the UK at the moment, trying to get shows and make the most of the summer, make the most of the daylight, you know, and get those shows delivered. So that also if there are second waves that prevent filming that we are in a position to obviously edit shows remotely which our producers did so skillfully during lockdown but I think as far as sort of where we are it's so exciting because you know we have multiple platforms that we're commissioning for and of course our brief is is getting broader Oh, I'm excited to hear the announcements when they come out to see what you guys have been working on during lockdown. So I'll, I'll hang tight for that one. Um, <laughs> but thank you very much for, for taking the time to chat to us and come on the podcast. Thank you, Hannah. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Commissioning Conversations. We'll be back next week with more. So don't forget to subscribe on Spotify, Apple, Podbeam or YouTube. In the meantime, the latest commission briefs can be found on broadcastintel.com.